Hi there, everyone. This is Howard from AB Transfers UK wishing you a good morning. Behind me, behold, some interesting bits of kit. Um, I am a big NAD fan, particularly NAD of the late 80s and early 90s. Here I've got some really interesting pieces from, well, the one in particular is from the Monitor series, the NAD 5000 CD player, which still works perfectly to this day. And it's my benchmark CD player to play back at discs that I've recorded on CDR. Let's face it, if a late 80s, early 90s machine can play that CD, anything can play it. But I digress. Today we're looking at um, transferring of a very, very common format. This is not beta cam. It is HD cam SR. Right? Can you see that? There we go. But because Sony were quite clever, they're the same form factor as beta cam, beta max, etc. tapes. Now, these tapes have been in storage for a while and they look okay. But for fun, I'm going to run this one through the video tape cleaner. Mmm just to get any loose oxide off. So let's do that, shall we? So yeah, this machine makes a lot of noise. Let's hear it. Oh, it's making beautiful music. This is an RTI, Research Technology International, um, Tape Check Pro Line Tape Cleaner. Not a lot of these machines going around and uh, what they do is they literally clean your videotape before we transfer it. Uh, it's particularly useful on dirty old tapes, but it's good for clean ones too. So let's pop that in. In she goes. That's dead sexy. What's happening inside? The tape is busy, busy being spun around the cleaning uh, mechanism, and then we hit auto. And off we go. It should be cleaning the tape. and. Uh, there she starts counting. We'll uh, just show you that. And that noise you hear inside, oh my goodness, that's an angle. That noise you hear inside is uh, a pump. There's an air pump and a filter inside that are basically sucking the living daylights. No, sucking the loose oxide off the tape as it gets burnished and as it gets cleaned by the tape cleaning mechanism inside. So we hope. So that's gonna wind through backwards and forwards and it's just a nice way of me checking the tape's okay before I stick it in a machine. I'm still hunting uh, for a umatic one, uh, but I have not had the uh, success in finding one yet. But uh, I believe they are out there somewhere. But at the moment, uh, umatic tapes do present a problem because they're some of the worst of the offenders in terms of dirt. Um, I have built a one inch machine that cleans tapes, but uh, the umatic is certainly out there in the desired list, but uh, no luck yet with that. So once that's done, we'll pop it in the VTR and see how it looks. I just popped it in this machine and I have no idea. It's been so long since I've actually had to do anything on these machines. I can't remember. Oh, there's something going on there. Uh, let's just try to get a monitor here. Okay, wow, it took me a while. It's been a while since I figured out these machines and I was uh, a bit fuzzy. I don't actually get a lot of this modern stuff, probably because it's modern enough to be done in-house by a lot of people, but occasionally I get it. Um, and there it's reading HD Cam SR. It is uh, a 50i recording and uh, without giving away too much of the contents, uh, there it is. And uh, it's uh, just rewinding at the moment. And it goes straight into here. Oh, that can go off. We don't need that. Um, it's going straight into here, and we're going to record it straight to this hard drive as um, a ProRes HD file. So we should be good to go. And there we go. So this will record 
all multiple channels of sound, whatever multiple channels of sound there are, and it'll record them straight in onto, onto a ProRes file. It tells me that it's got 140 minutes uh, available on the drive, um, which should be more than enough because this tape is only a um, 60 minute tape. But considering that's a 240 gig hard drive or SSD, that's a lot of information for just a tape. So there's obviously a lot of compression that goes in on the recording. And then from the recording, when it plays back, it decompresses it into a sort of very large format, large uncompressed size. And then that is recorded as faithfully as possible on there and monitored by that screen, which is a, a CRT screen, but it does monitor up to 1080i. So it just gives you the whole, the whole uh, quality. These are obviously transfers uh, done uh, from film at some point. So that's pretty incredible. So uh, here's an interesting device that uh, found its way to living in uh, AV Transfer Studio, um, which is a bit different to the other ones I've got. This is a portable one inch Sony video recorder. Okay, so this is basically what the professionals would have used back i guess in the early 80s mid 80s um if they wanted to record stuff on location obviously um this was the answer this is the sony bvh 500 aps actually bvh 500 aps video recorder running on 12 volts um, perhaps there was space for batteries there. I guess there probably was. But uh, I don't think you'd want to carry this on your back. What is this, like 25 kilos? <laughs> um, with a lot of inputs and outputs here, we've got uh, your camera, your line, your video in, your line in. You've got three channels of analog audio, um, editing, remote, and your power. So this was basically a portable video recorder, which was the one inch standard. Now, there are a couple of things that are interesting about this. The one is this machine records and plays in color, but it cannot play back color um, without the use of a special adapter. A an extra piece of electronics and outboard processor that will then correctly decode the color so I'm planning on showing it to you today uh, working without the color playback because obviously that is a piece of hardware I unfortunately don't have um, <clears throat> but it will produce a picture and it will record in color so the big deal is you know um, it's a one inch machine, which is pretty cool. So let's just take a look over here. There are your controls. And here you can slide that up. And you've got things like battery power, input, video, IF. Uh, there's a battery light, hours and minutes. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Um, this goodie does not. It's not light, okay? It's not light. You know, this thing is probably weighs about as much as a 20, 26 inch CRT TV, if that gives you any idea. What's that like, 20 kilos at least? Anyway, so this one's got power going in and that's going up to a very handy seven amp power supply I have, uh, which I use. This is a standard power lead that can be used on various different devices and it's just nice to have this in here my uh, m2 vcr also uses this so i can use this for multiple uh, decks obviously i could get something newer but you know if it is working and it's good why why change it so right there's a handle oh my god that's the height of optimism that's me pulling with a hernia trying to get that out oh what's that oh, it's just screws Okay, so let's get that open and you can take a look further at that. Yeah, so this is just for fun. Just a bit of a show and tell. Um, I wouldn't use this for playback of clients' recordings unless they specifically wanted me to. 
But look at this. That's a very nice looking machine. So this has got a 16 minute taping. Yes, that is 16 minutes. That's about eight inches, maybe seven inches. Maybe that's an eight inch behind. The feed reel is in front and the take up reel is behind. So basically they will move together when we play a tape. So let's put this on. Let's see if this goes on. Yeah, it's on. I see a little light there. Let's push standby. So what happens in standby? The head starts to spin. And uh, we're going to push play, I guess. And there she goes. So both reels are turning in the same direction. The one, the, the one at the back is the, I suppose... Which one is the play? I guess the back one is the play? Let's just see. Yeah, it goes around the head. And then it comes back and goes back to the... Yeah. So that's the take-up reel. The one that's on the inside. Really curious contraption. Let's just take a closer look at that. I mean, you have to admire the engineering on this, right? I mean, that's incredible. And then if we go looking here, we've got... IF video audio monitor i'm not sure if this rf signal is good oh this uh, is this battery here i don't know if this tape is good let's just try rewind it we've hit rewind let's see what happens i suppose we can figure out which reel gets fuller whichever one gets fuller is the one that's the one we want right It's quite a gnarly tape, this one. It's not a beautiful tape at all. Let's try plug it into something and see what we get. Now, because the heads actually make a quite a noise when they're spinning, <coughs> it's quite nice to actually close the front of this. So it's a lot quieter and easier to talk. Okay, let me go find a, a picture cable, see if we can get a picture out of this machine. And there we have it. I'm not too sure why it's got a bit of a bit of a roll in it. I almost think if it was running at the correct speed, there would be proper color lock. Because this TV is trying very hard to give the color lock. But it might be to do with the power supply. I've seen it's moaning a little bit about the battery. So perhaps it's not getting enough current. There's a nine inch reel switch. I don't know what that does. There's a, a so CF is to do with the cap stand. Um, very interesting machine and uh, like I say it does not produce color um, but I'm almost convinced I'm seeing flashes of full color coming through as I'm watching it I would imagine that a modern, modern monitor may well have the ability to pull in the color if, even if it's not quite at the right frequency because these monitors are generally um, wide frequency range and these are great little monitors the sony lmd 1950 i think it is uh, they do um digital and analog inputs so you can go up to i think 1080 or 720 uh on these as well so it can do sdi as well yeah i'm definitely seeing bits of color there i'm not just imagining that um i wouldn't be surprised if we can get that to play stably um, there was a fault on this machine, a friend of mine fixed it, but I suspect this particular issue might be more to do with the power than anything else. Let's just have a look here. What else have we got here? Back, space, edit, on, off, doesn't seem to do much. Line, camera, CF pulse, maybe it needs the time base corrector. There's the hours and minutes recording um, use thing. Let's see, it looks like it's been reset very interesting i don't know will this kind of rectify itself as it plays will it start getting better i'm wondering let's just try and rewind that fascinating piece of kit it's just a beautiful thing to watch to be honest I think there might be an issue with the power supply. Let me just check 
battery. Looks okay, but it may not be giving it enough. Uh, maybe it needs an input video, input reference or something. I don't know. Yeah, it may well need an uh, input of some kind to, to lock the servo. It's the only thing I could think of offhand. Do I care enough about it to worry? Not particularly, because I've got lots of these machines. But uh, certainly got good heads, and uh, I think that's pretty encouraging. Just see here, brightness, chroma. Not too sure what that's about. I should probably try and hook it up with an external reference. I'd imagine it probably needs an input. But just looking at the video, the IF signal, it kind of comes and goes. Yeah, it probably needs some sort of a lock uh, to get the proper sync. But still a very interesting uh, little goodie. <laughs> yeah, it's taken me some time to get around to, to plugging that in. Um, it's a gorgeous machine. It weighs a brick and a half and three quarters ton tonnage wise it's like 20 plus kilos um i'm gonna play a bit more with it but uh, i thought you might enjoy seeing uh what it's about uh sony video recorder an early broadcast uh, machine uh one inch i guess before maybe it was at the same time as umatic perhaps this was just a better co a better sort of format um but i mean there's a lot packed in that machine but uh, obviously crammed down to the bare minimum it needed to work um i'm assuming there's either an issue with the power or that it needs a, a reference signal coming in uh in order to to give a proper lock i'm going to give that a try but uh this is hard from av transfers continually trying new machines and interesting goodies if you like this kind of thing uh please consider subscribing stick around i've got more to show you trust me just got to get around to digging them out and showing you but for now bye bye